welcome to the November edition of the POG Show, the City of Port Orange uh, News and Information Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Springer, the Public Information Officer for the City of Port Orange. And in this month's edition, I am joined by two very special guests, uh, Miss Odette and Officer Jean. Welcome to the podcast studios, both of you. Thank you. Thank you. And before we start, I just want to get a little bit to know a little bit more about both of you. So, Miss Odette, if you don't mind telling me, what do you do here for the city of Port Orange and kind of how long have you been doing it here with the city? Well, I have been with the city of Port Orange Police Department going on three years this coming January. I am the victim advocate coordinator of the victim advocate department. So what that entails and what it means is that victims of crime we respond to the individuals in the community who have a um, police call out. So that can be a domestic dispute, domestic violence, um, fraud, larceny. You're looking at suicide, homicide calls. And um, we're all basically on call 24-7. Now, our, my office is open Monday through Friday. 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., but if an officer calls us at midnight, we're there to assist them. And that would be someone such as Officer Gene. Yeah, speaking of getting those calls at midnight, Officer Gene, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do there for the Port Orange Police Department and kind of how long have you been with them? I've been with the Port Orange Police Department for approximately 13 years. Uh, I'm on patrol, Bravo Platoon. I'm a hostage negotiator, and I'm also on the honor guard team. Um, I go out and answer the calls that Miss Odetta is talking about, um, domestic violence situations, uh, physical altercations. And on the honor guard team, you know, we go out and we present colors at the graduation for the new officers. And the hostage team... Uh, I have yet to be out on a call for one of those, and I'm actually thankful for that. You know, that's that's a rough rough time for somebody. I, I would imagine for both of you to do your jobs and to do them well, it involves a level of compassion, empathy, and understanding, being able to kind of connect with people and having that uh, empathy for them and the situations they're in, which seems kind of appropriate since both of you are now behind the program going on right now, Cops for Christmas, which has been going on for about three years now. Yes, since 2020. It's, so this is a toy drive we do every year? How, what is this? How does Cops for Christmas work a little bit for people who may not know? Cops for Christmas uh, started in 2020. Um, and in 2021, it, it became more involved in with getting the schools involved. So basically what we do is we go out to the schools, me and Miss Odetta, and we present the school counselors with packets uh, and those packets are they have the guardian or parents name on them their address phone number and the amount of children that they have in their home not just the one child at the school uh, I know everybody's heard of uh, shop with the cop shop with the cop if there's three two or four children in a family only gets one child out of the whole family Christmas gifts uh, Cops for Christmas actually provides the whole, all the children in the family up to the age of 18, as long as they're, you know, in school, whether it's homeschooled or in a, you know, public, you know, in one of our schools here in Port Orange or the South Daytona Elementary School. It, so the counselors pick out the children. We do not. Um, and they talk to the parents. And if the parents want to be a part of Cops for Christmas, then they receive the packet, fill it out, uh, and on the packet includes their child's name, the clothes they want, or a, a few wish list items, and they return it to the school, or they return it to the PD by a certain date. That's that's how they're chosen, and and that's how it comes about. Um, there's also another part to Cops for Christmas I'll let Miss Odetta say. Yeah, how did you two get involved in the program? How did you two come together on um, this? How did this all kind of happen? Well, I say thank you, COVID, for helping it, to, for us to come together. 
When I signed on um, with the Port Orange Police Department, a lot of the staff, or, or volunteers, I should state, had um, basically resigned due to COVID because of the different ailments. And yes, you know, a great many of them were 60 plus in age. Um, so Officer Jean came to me and asked if, you know, I would like to join with his team. Now, mind you, the year before he had joined with um, Captain Kilpatrick and Captain Kilpatrick had resigned, that um, this retired, excuse me, the next year. So with us joining together, that gave us the opportunity to brainstorm a little bit more because we also wanted the program to grow and not just be um, a small program. Because we want, when I say grow, we want to do something else besides just Cops for Christmas program in the future, like maybe a yard sale, a 5K, um, and a golf program, for example. Because it's expanded from just those handful of schools the first year to pretty much every school in Port Orange now and South Daytona are now part of this program? Yes. So at this point, we now have 11 schools. So initially... The program started with just the elementary schools. And like um, Officer and Jean and I were talking earlier today, why don't we just go ahead and have the middle schools and high schools? Because everyone forgets about those children. Um, yes, they're not into toys. They are in more electronics. But you're looking at giving the, that group of children gift cards, for example. I know our first year together, we had a young man who was 17 years old wanting a toolbox with tools in it so he can help his mom to repair his home. So in the young man that wanted the toolbox, I learned about him and I contacted the mom and everything. And it was really special because, you know, growing up the way I grew up, it you know, we grew up rough you know, very poor and everything. And, and you know, the, the program involves Spouses Back in the Blue, which is a nonprofit organization. Um, me and some spouses started in 2017. Um, involves the Port Orange Police Department and, of course, victim advocates. Um, but it's, it's the kid that wanted the tools really touched me because you know, to care about your family and to love your family the way he does to go out and get tools. You know, I have to give a thank you to Home Home and Home Depot and Ryobi and them who donated tools for this child to be able to go out and do this. It's really amazing to hear the stories behind some of some of our our wish lists. You know, it's you know, like one year there was a sad, you know, family having a rough year and everything. It was our I would say our, our second year, um, they was riding a bicycle going to get groceries and, you know, all the kids would have to go with the parents and crash tow recovery. I contacted him. He's a good friend of mine, Eddie. And, you know, he was, I told him the situation and I said, you know, we need to get this family a car. A week later, he showed up in my front yard with a car on his tow truck. And uh, we were able to donate that car free and clear to the family. And, you know, it's just, we can't always do these things. But when you hear of certain situations, you try to go out here and, and make a little bit more of a difference in that family's life if you can. You know, we've provided beds. We've provided furniture. We've, we've provided clothing. Everything you can think of under the sun, we have tried our best to get these families and, you know, it's, yes, certain stories stick with you more than others. But, you know, if it wasn't for the effort for the, for the police department, victims advocate, and spouses back in blue um, members and the citizens of our community, you know, this would be even harder. And I know this drive's going on November, starting November 14th all the way through December 21st. Um, yes. What are some of the supplies and things you all need or are looking for this year? If people do want to donate help, what are some things that could be beneficial that they want to come up by to the donation bin that's going to be set up there at the Port Orange Police Department over on Clyde Morris? What what are you looking for? What can they bring to donate? Individuals can bring um, 
the an un a new unused wrap toy. Okay. Um I know a lot of people focus on your kindergartners or I just just state elementary school. But let's think about your middle schoolers. Yes, they're looking at gift cards, but some women may need um, earplugs. Some of them need pencils and paper because of the home. Their mom and dads do not have the funds to buy just the basic supplies, for example. Um, socks. Yes, we have people asking for deodorant. You're talking um, underwear. That includes bras you know, that people are looking for. So it's things like that, that what we are looking for. Can you think of anything else? To add, add to that, the, you know, there's a lot of toys out here I didn't know existed until Cops for Christmas started. I didn't know what a Roblox was. And I didn't even know what a Smushmallow. When, when I started seeing these lists for Smushmallows and Roblox, I'm looking at Miss Odetta going, I, I'm out of my league here. And and <laughs> unfortunately, you know, we had to look them up. And it, it's it's pretty neat to learn the new toys. It's everything that all these children want. And, and luckily, I still have a 15-year-old at the house, you know, and my 18-year-old. And they're able to help me like, Dad, come on. Really? You don't know what this is? It, you know, it's it's fun to to get out here and and do the work. And and learn the different toys and stuff that they're they're wanting. But like Miss Odetta said, it's it's not always toys that we see on the list. You know, there's clothes, there's deodorant, there's toothpaste, there's uh, any kind of hygiene product you can think of. It's it's on the list, and it's it's really amazing to to see the community working together. I mean, that's that's my biggest thing is we have great citizens in our city and in our community. And, you know, I get to go out here and meet them as an officer. You know, that's a, that's a bad time for anybody. Anytime an officer shows up, it's not a great time. But to get to be able to hang out with them, talk with them, laugh with them at a different time, it makes it even more special. And, you know, I, a big thank you for the, all the companies out here in, in our community that's helping us. And, you know, if I, if I had to say, you know, we could use some, we've learned that the smush mellow, am I saying that right? All right. Well, we've learned that the price of them have went up. So, and we've got some on the list. So we could probably use a few of those too. So they can drop these off at the lobby of the Port Orange Police Department yes. over there on Clyde Morris uh, weekdays, 8 to 5, when the lobby's open there, going from November 14th through the 21st. Are there any other spots that may have donation bins or if people want to set up a donation bin in their business? How can they do that? Is that something they can do? Yes. Other spots that we have thus far are Palmer's Chiropractic Clinic, for example, Star, which is right here in Port Orange off of Dunlawton Avenue. Um, uh, Planet Smoothie of Port Orange in the Pavilion, their um, Texas Roadhouse, Red Robin, uh, Florida Healthcare in Daytona it will be the pain management department. Oh, who, who can the, people reach out to if they want to get a box in their business? Who can they? They can reach out to us, either oh. Gene or. Well, I should say Officer Jean or myself. What's the best way for them to get in touch? You with can them? call me at 386-506-5820. And Officer Jean, I haven't mastered your number yet. <laughs> you can call me at 386-871-4055. Um, you can also drop off toys at LA Fitness. You know, I know everybody goes in there to stay healthy and you know, BJ's is right next door. You know, on your way in, you can pick up a gift, or when you're done sweating and you're going in there for your protein necessities, you can pick up a gift and bring it back into LA Fitness. Um, Natural Health and Wellness Clinic, uh, Chiropractic, and uh, Daytona also is accepting gifts. 
And I know earlier you were showing me some of the pictures from the donations in years past and the amount of people it takes to kind of go through those and put them together and give them to the family. I mean, talk to me a little bit about, I know it's not just you two, but you have a whole army of volunteers or elves, whatever you want to call them, helping put this together. And we do have an army that we are building together. Um, What you're talking about is the food donation. So I want to say maybe a good 10 years, maybe 12 Crane Lakes has been donating food to the Port Orange Victim Advocate Department. And we have ladies from the Port Orange Presbyterian Church, their faith group. They will come in on a set date and organize all the food. So meaning if the cans are, um, the expiration date has passed, we make sure that is pulled out. So these young ladies will come in and organize all the food in a bag. We also have a couple of church groups and Atlantic Junior ROTC program helping with us. So when everybody comes to get their um, packets or gifts, I should state, on the 16th of December, and all the schools are organized with a set time frame, and they will be notified of this date and time, they are given an extra bag of food. Now, if they have a large family, they generally get two bags. And I do want to say Ritter's, ice cream shop, they're also involved. And last year, um, John Ritter went out and got seven turkeys. And um, I contacted seven families just randomly and gave them a turkey. Because, of course, I had to make sure because a lot of people, you know, the storms had gone through. A lot, a lot of, uh, not enough people had stoves going on. So that's what we did. And that's where the food goes. So this year, last year we probably had six or seven members at each each meeting. This year I called it our Christmas platoon. I mean, we are a police department, so we have more people on the Christmas platoon than we have in a platoon at the police department now. So it's it's amazing. So there's a minimum 20, 20 individuals that are involved coming to these meetings to try to help make all these, you know, gifts, wishes come true. Um, I mentioned Walmart before. They're they're amazing. The management staff at Walmart, there's 24 managers. And they said, hey, we want to team up, and we want your biggest family, and we want six of them. So six individual families, not only is Walmart donating to us, but their management has stepped up and said, we're going to sponsor family this year also. So it's, it's, it's businesses like Walmart, Thrive Church, Texas Roadhouse. It's businesses, you know, Church. yes, Presbyterian Church. So the ROTC kids that are coming to help, you know, it, it's, that's, that's, your, that's your army, you know, that's coming to wrap these gifts and and make these wishes come true. And, you know, I invite the whole community to, to make this wish come true for these children. I do want to say a special thank you to Thrive Church. Um, there's a team of young ladies that are putting together a spreadsheet. I know with my busy scheduled day for work, I don't have that extra time. But these young ladies are taking the time to list each family's wish, what they're looking for, for toys, whether it's deodorant, um, clothing, on a spreadsheet. They also have color-coded it for me, because that's what I had asked for, to which families are being donated. I mean, not donated, adopted, excuse me. So it's a big project. Everyone thinks it's just something that you can walk in and do, but... No, it's a lot of organization that's going on um, behind the scenes. Uh, Sometimes I don't sleep well at night, neither does Officer Gene, because we're thinking of what else we need to do or what we can do to make it better. And that's how we work as a team. Now, is there also an opportunity to donate at Texas, or uh, is it Red Robin, where you can go there, get a portion of your bill? 20%. Can you talk about that a little bit, Officer Gene? So Red Robin is November the 22nd. It's the night before Thanksgiving. 
Um, if you got any shopping to do, stop in. It's an all-day event. Uh, and 20% of your bill, it's not added to your bill, this is 20% of your total bill, will go to the spouses back in the blue. And all that money, all the monies from that will go to Cops for Christmas. Uh, spouses Back in the Blue has a website. It's spousesbackintheblue.org. There's a link there. You can donate uh, money to Cops for Christmas. All money donated during November and December goes straight to Cops for Christmas. Uh, Texas Roadhouse, we have an event there on November 27th. I believe it starts at 5 p.m. You come in and they will donate 10% of your total bill to the Cops for Christmas program. Uh, there's also another way to contact us is uh, Cops for Christmas 25 at gmail.com. Dot com, excuse me. Um, you can also contact us there if, if you want to do some support. And that drive's going on starting November 14th. It'll be open at the Port Orange Police Department lobby. The box will be up there to drop off any of those unwrapped toys that you want to donate. Anything. Oh, <clears throat> I know you all are very busy this time of year, getting all this organized, so I appreciate you all taking the time to come down here, talk to us a little bit about this program. Thank you all. Sir Gene, Miss Odette, thank you both for what you do. And with that, that is our November edition here of the Pog Show. And Mick? out.